Good morning. So I decided to do my project a little bit different. I did do the PowerPoint, but I thought that I would record this um, just to walk through mine. Um, we are going to be making totem poles um, out of clay. I decided to use air dry clay that I use for my other projects in this class and also with acrylic paints. Um, not only will the children be learning about um, the history of totem poles, but they will be learning how to sculpt a totem pole and um, how the symbols on a totem pole can reflect to something maybe that has happened in their personal life and what it meant to others. Um, I am doing this for fourth grade. Um, I believe that in fourth grade, um, children are able to actually be able to make these. Now, my daughter is in fourth grade um, and uh, she was pretty excited to be able to uh, make her own totem pole. I, however, did not put her totem pole um, in the presentation because she hasn't finished painting it yet because she had some other obligations. Um, but for her, I know um, she had a lot of fun. One thing that I did do with her um, was I let her um, make paper templates to put and carve out her um, clay to make her animals a little bit easier to do. Um, I think it is important. Um, so in the beginning, um, I'm just going to go through this. Uh, the focus will be on how to mold and shape clay. Um, this should be something that fourth, fourth graders or fifth graders even could do. Um, at this age, students should be able to paint their totem poles and they should be able to have techniques that they kind of know how um, to do these. Um, I did go to the National um, Core Standards for Visual Arts and I have um, put down here um, the creating, the um, representing, the responding, and the connecting that children will have. Um, in the beginning of this, um, for my introduction, um, you know, we're going to go through the history of what the totem pole means. Um, I was fortunate enough that me and my children lived in Alaska for eight years. Two of my children were born in Alaska. And so we were fortunate for some of the things that we got to learn. Um, later in the discussion, I will um, explain um, that. You know, so we go through the history um, of the totem pole and some of the myths, you know, um, Totem poles were very important um, to people. It was a symbol of their tribes, and they carved and um, they put them in their front yards. It made them um, what symbolize what their family stood for. Um, I think that every family has something that they stand for, and I think that maybe not all families have something that they um, can do, but I think it's fantastic that um, we are able to... Um, use that people were able to use totem poles to be able to uh actually um oh how do i put it um show what their family stood for and the different things that had meaning to their family um there are lots of myths about totem poles um you know uh and there's a lot of facts that people need to know about totem poles um, I did use one of the websites that you recommended, um, and I used other websites, So, um, but one of them that you recommended. So before we actually, um, oops, I went somewhere, sorry, yeah, miss, okay, so after we do all of the lesson and stuff, I was going to use this worksheet, and in the little squares is where they could put the symbols that they planned on um, making. Now, before we actually did this, we had one day when we went over the history, I showed YouTube videos, um, we look and see everything, um, you know, about totem poles. I wanted the kids to go home after that art class and I wanted them to be able to ask their parents, you know, different things about their family, symbols, things that they thought would be good to put on the totem pole. So then they're going to come back and they're going to draw the next art class, the symbols that they the animals, whatever symbols, animals they were planning on using for their totem pole in the fort. And then I wanted them to write and describe why they chose those, what they meant to them, what they meant to their family, something that um, had meaning because totem poles have meaning behind them. They are actually symbols that have to do with the family. And um, I did find this template for this actual um, totem pole online. I didn't create it myself. Um, it's on one of the websites. I thought that it was, um, I actually just found the picture of it and um, pasted it in. I thought um, it was really great. Um, it was a printable one, so it is something you could actually use in a uh, class. So after that, you know, 
we have the vocabulary words. So we're going to sculpt. We're going to do a three-dimensional piece of artwork. Um, we have to make it where it balances to go down on the dowel rod. Um, we want to make sure that they work well together. I know personally when I did mine, I started with the fish. I didn't like it. I turned around. I put the moose on. So I had to do mine. Um, you know, uh, we um, contoured lines. We outlined what we were going to do before we did it. Um, and then, you know, they can mix colors and stuff. I personally did not have to. Um, my vocabulary words continue onto the next slide. So the children are actually, you know, learning different things about um, art as we go along. Then, you know, I would, like I said, my first class, art class, we are going to show videos. We are going to discuss totem poles. We're going to learn the history of totem poles and why I think this is actually a great um, art activity to do for students. The next class after the students have gone home, discussed it with their families, they are going to do the worksheet. Um, and then we're going to start with the symbols um, in the next art class, and they're going to have a couple of art classes to do that. Um, and then they'll finish their totem poles. Um, I believe it would take about five hours to do. We need air dry clay, dowel rods, acrylic paint, paint brushes, paper, paper plates, carving tools. Um, I need a computer, a dry erase board, a projector, and it'll cost about $100 for 20 children to do this. You know, also a little bit of cleanup. You're probably going to need paper towels or, you know, stuff to clean up the spills with. Um, so for preparation, you know, each student is going to have their paper or their object that they are going to start their totem pole on. Each one of them, I'm going to start them out with a dowel rod and clay. Um, the first few classes they will not need um, any of the paints yet. And then they're gonna get enough clay where they can portion it out to be able to do their symbols um, on their totem pole. Um, so my lesson plan, you know, um, I've pretty much basically explained my lesson plan. Um, now, to make adaption for special need children. Um, if there are um, special need children who have actually um, need someone to work with them one-on-one. -on -one. Hopefully I can have a para in the classroom or I can have a special ed teacher in there to actually help them with their project and we can simplify it more. Maybe they don't have to do the worksheet. Maybe they can just, you know, um, if they cannot use their hands properly, maybe we can, they can tell us what animals they want to use and we can actually do them and get their input on that. If I have visually impaired children, I'm going to move them to the front of the class. I'm going to make sure that my projection on the wall is high and big enough that the students can actually, um, they can actually see it um, because I believe that, um, you know, they need to um, be able to see it. Now, if they're hearing impaired, I will speak a little bit louder. I will let them, um, you know, sit at the front of class, make sure that they have clear instructions and that if they need any help, I'm there. Now, for children who are more um, challenged, like I said, I will have someone in there or we will completely adapt the whole lesson plan. So maybe they will just draw a totem pole on paper because they can't actually work with the clay. And for gifted students, um, I would definitely encourage them to make more details, um, to think inside, think outside the box, and maybe dig a little deeper into their potential just so that they get more out of it. Um, evaluating the kids, I would like to evaluate them by interacting with the students and making sure that they understand the techniques and um, ideas, that they learn how to use a tool um, to cut out their clay objects and that they know exactly what they're doing. Um, I would grade the students um, and you know I think um, on evaluation every student is different and they all have a different artistic ability and they should not um, be punished when it comes to grading. I don't like to use the word punished but punished if um, theirs doesn't look like Susie's for example. Everybody's is going to be different. Every artist is different and so I think that um, when it comes to grading art, it might be a little bit uh, more difficult. I think that you have to be able to um, overlook different things and that as long as that student um, put the effort and did what they needed to do, um, that they should, you know, do really well. Um, I would grade on participation effort and I would definitely um, grade on 
their stories behind their symbols that they made um, the totem pole. If, you know, they really went home, talked to their parents or thought themselves about things. That's something that their parents do every year. Um, so, um, and feedback, good or bad, um, I'm going to encourage every student. It doesn't matter their ability. You know, if they get discouraged, you just go and help them. Um, give them encouragement, you know. Um, let them know that um, everybody is different and that theirs may not look like everyone else's, but they're doing a great job. Um... I think that if I can engage my students that they are interested and that they learn something that I have actually made this a successful lesson lesson plan, I would actually lead the discussion, but I also want the students to add into their discussion. It would be amazing to hear each student at least tell one idea why they thought it was great that they put on um, their um, totem pole. Um, I would ask um, some questions. For me, totem poles um, seemed like a really good idea for a lesson plan. First, I like to work with clay. I've never done it before until this class, but it's been really rewarding. Um, and I am not going to give them a quiz, but I would like to ask them some questions to make sure they paid attention during it. So here's the actual project. So the first step, you're going to have a dowel rod. You're going to make a base for it. And you got to make sure the base is okay and that it's level so that everything stands up. Um, second, we are going to start. Now, I know that doesn't look like a moose at the bottom, but it actually is a moose. Um, when we lived in Alaska, we would have moose come in our yard all the time. And sometimes it interfered with the school bus, but it was really cool to see them. Got lots of great pictures. The second is a fish. It's a salmon because in Alaska the salmon are amazing when you get to go out by the ocean and see them. Third, I made a bear because we actually had black bears in our yard at time. I have um, videos and pictures of them. Um, it wasn't always safe <laughs> um, where I lived, but um, you left them alone, they left you alone, but it was actually an amazing experience. And then I made an eagle because in the winter time, the eagles were so fantastic, especially to see on the snow. And at the top, I made a cross. And the cross is because one of the traditions in our house is we don't actually um, do Santa Claus. We celebrate Jesus because we are Christians and that's what we believe. This is actually what my finished pro project looked like once um, it was painted. Um, like I said, I didn't really blend any colors. I did solid colors with mine as an example for the students. Um, now the students can blend, do whatever. I'm kind of curious to see what my daughter's will look like when she finishes hers. But these are symbols that mean something to me and my family because I had two children in Alaska and you know, I have a lot of great memories there and going from Alaska to Kansas was definitely a big change for me and my family. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the project and I hope that if I was telling this to another teacher exactly what we were going to do, that they understood what we were going to do. Have a blessed day.